And good morning. Welcome to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. So we talked to the head basketball coach of the Wabasi Warriors, Coach John Everingham. Coach, thanks for being with us this morning. Yeah, glad to be here and ready to talk some basketball. Let's talk about last week's games first. Uh, our first opponent last week was Manchester. Always interesting when Manchester comes in the house. Uh, traditionally, these TRC schools that we play, the Manchesters, the Whitcos, uh, they're not TRC, but in the same mindset, Columbia City, yeah. those schools from that area, bring a very physical brand of basketball. Were you... Um, did you think that was what Manchester was going to bring uh, last week? Yeah, we, we knew they were going to come in ready. And we've developed a little bit of a rivalry, you know, with, with Manchester. We've mm -hmm. had some good games, you know, the, since I've been here, honestly. And I, I know, um, just thinking back, we, we went on the road and, and um, uh, Jacob Hand hit a last-second shot uh, his junior year. His senior year, he hits another last-second shot against them. Um, they got us uh, Ben Hoffert's senior year. I think by four points, that was kind of back and forth. And so um, it's just one of those games early in the season that, that we kind of expect to be back and forth. And, and um, uh, that's exactly what happened. You know, Manchester, you know, built a little bit of a lead and, and probably both teams. I know their, their coach, Coach Henson, you know, was quoted in the paper, that's a game we should have won. And, mm -hmm. and so he feels that way. I'm thinking, you know, the same thing, that we, we should have never been down by seven, you know, in the fourth quarter. We just didn't quite – execute well enough um you know in the first three quarters and and really honestly that that freshman you know the the big guy that freshman just mm -hmm. gave us he was a handful and and i think he ended up with maybe 24 points but we started you know some different things different looks for him in, the, in that fourth quarter we just sent somebody maddox was was uh in the help side and and we got a couple steals a couple big steals you know in that in the fourth quarter so um, I thought we played okay for three quarters, but played really well in the fourth quarter against Yeah, them. it was really, I thought, a game where both teams learned a lot about themselves. Uh, Manchester learned, I think, that they, they've got to finish. They've got to stay there with it, and they've got to be able to adapt. And I think we learned um, that uh, that post-play, that we're going to have to change our attitude toward post-play. Yeah, no, there's no question. We, we play behind, and we played behind, you know, for years, and, and we, we've gotten away with it. Mm -hmm. And um, we just can't – we obviously just can't do that anymore. We got beat up – I know we'll talk about West Knoll. We got beat up by Macias on the inside. We get beat up by a freshman on the inside. And, and Well, and they're two totally different kinds of post players, too. The Manchester kid, the freshman, tall, lanky kid, great mobility, mm -hmm. um, uh, but not particularly a wide body. Macias, football player, yeah. <laughs> looks like a defensive end. He's going to Purdue to be a place kicker, but he looks like a defensive end. Totally different kind of post play, but also very effective. Yeah, very effective. And, and even, you know, the I think it's, what is his name, Baton or something like that, uh, from Manchester stepped yeah. out and knocked yeah. down some outside shots too. Yeah. So he's a, he's a skilled guy, freshman. Uh, he's going to be uh, quite the player, you know, I think in future years. But we didn't quite – see him finish at the basket mm. um on film mm -hmm. and we thought we could just play behind and and maybe maybe he'll become a, a good player later on down the road you know <laughs> yeah, no it was I, in uh, that game he became the yeah good player. he did yeah. and so he figured it out he <laughs> honestly if you watch the film and and uh he just couldn't get the ball in the hoop and and had trouble finishing and so uh you know we decided to play behind but we switched a lot of guys onto him peyton felger guarded him keaton dukes guarded him uh colin guarded him and none of those guys could could get the job done so we had to send another guy to help and um and the the dangers on that with manchester is they got four shooters mm -hmm. uh, out around the perimeter they're very capable so you kind of you know with them we had to pick our poison just a little bit we thought if we could we could hold the post player down just a little bit we would we'd maybe uh, limit their three-point, you know, shot attempts. So we're looking at, you know, some different things. And, and we toyed with, you know, some zone work this week this week in practice. And, oh, and wow. so, you know, you might see some different looks, you know, as we progress, you know, through our season. Um, you know, some of the things, every team's got their weaknesses. And, and here's the thing, the other coaches are finding those weaknesses sure. out. Well, that's part and, of their job. Yeah, and so I know West Noble, for example, was at the – Manchester game and and even yes. a little little birdie told me that they purposely didn't schedule a Friday night game leading into the Wawa C game. Whoa! And yeah, I I looked really? at the. Uh, I'll just be honest. Mm. It was uh, their, how their, interesting. Their athletic director kind of winked at me and said we did that on purpose. And I was like, well, you a little booger. I said that's not yeah okay. Yeah. That's not, so I think it's uh it's a game that means something to West Noble. Yeah. And I think that's what you saw. You know from the West Noble game. Just moving on to that game. 
is you, you just had one team that looked like wasn't ready to play quite, you know, coming off a big emotional, you know, victory the night before and and another team that just was really hungry. hungry. Well, I, I thought to be to give a little more credit than that to your team, the West Noble guys, they're the real deal. You got the you got that Zavala guy, hardest working man in basketball. Yeah. He is out there working hard. You got the Macias kid underneath who is just a physical monster. You've got um Kripe who I'm not sure how he ended up over at West Noble. I'll tell you, the Fairfield people aren't yeah, very happy I about know. that since he went there for uh, K through eight. But anyway, um, and then you've got uh, that number three. I can't remember his name. Uh, Rhodes from yeah. West Noble. Rosales. Yeah. 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 Rosales, yeah, Rosales, hitting Rosales. from the outside. Rosales. You know, you, you got hit hard by the three and four guys <laughs> yeah. on that team. So when you got to send a guy to help on Macias, a guy to help in the post, that's when it really opens up that three and four guy. That, that I think on the year, you know, West Noble was shooting from three point range like uh, twenty three percent. Yeah, I think, <laughs> and uh, you know, they were seven for fifteen. You know, yeah. for for the game, they yeah. once they got rolling and and they started building a little bit of a lead, it was like everybody felt like they could hit threes. I mean, Nelson came in on a on tra- in a transition and just pulled up from three. And Rosales, you off know, we, the bench, the Nelson yeah. kid did a nice job. Yeah, Rosales, we we had, we had, uh, look, listen, we realized Friday night that we had a little bit of an issue with our post defense, and and so you know we we doubled off of Rosales, and he hit a couple threes. Yeah, and, you know, and so it was like we were, uh, you know, we were a little bit of a mess, you know, in that game. We were we were unsure of uh, exactly <laughs> what we wanted to do. You really couldn't change the way we're playing post defense kind of midstream you know like that we needed a week of practice to really work on um you know some of those post defensive concepts and you know that's what we did and it, it, it's amazing if we were to try to do it in, in the middle of the game it wouldn't work because i They're can tell ready. you there was teaching and learning going on early in the week in terms of practice you know on, on how to dig down if you're a guard and and how to play on the right side of the post you know if you're a post defender so um, you, you'll see a little bit different of a, a defensive team, you know, f- from us t- starting tonight and into you know a stretch of games that are going to be really really tough for us. Coach, talk a little bit about your going into zone. You have not used you use switching defense, but you have not yeah. used a, a you know a two three or a three two the old fashioned zones. Yeah. Uh, what are you gonna why and how are you gonna do that? Well, we we've been toying with some things. Again, we talk a lot about you know. Coach O'Connell and I sitting and talking, and and you you have to kind of step back just a little bit, you know, and think, okay, what are these other coaches thinking? And and we know our weaknesses, you know, we know what other teams are going to try to do, and they're going to try to exploit things you're not good at. And um, so as you look at that, you go, okay, well, if we're not good in this area, teams might try to do this. Now, how can we almost counteract what yeah. we think other teams are going to do? You got to stay like one one step ahead of the game, and so. You know, getting into a zone and, and getting guys, you know, specific responsibilities, um, you know, it's easier to, for help side, you know, and, and things like that. You do give up sometimes you give up, you know, some uh, uh, three point shots, you know, when you're when you're in a zone. And you also uh, we have a hard time teams in general have a hard time rebounding as well. And so those two things are really difficult to uh, to there's no like one answer that, that works for everything but mm-hmm. but anyway we we um we're going to start playing a little bit of zone there's no question that you know against Whitco you'll see a little bit probably not a ton but we have to start getting some of that on film and kind of seeing how our guys respond to that the other thing too is zone gives you a chance to um to trap and yeah. so you know if we are behind in games uh right now we honestly don't even have anything to turn to yeah, other than fouling and sending teams to the line and hoping they miss free throws. That's the only that's the only real defense we have for catching up, you know. And so if we get down a little bit, we do have something now that we can kind of turn to uh, in terms of pressure coming out of coming from that zone. Well, the well the difference of going from a man to a zone help uh, help better defense i mean you know when that when i've coached and, and somebody switches on you yeah. you think oh you know and then you got to yell at your kids and say hey you know <laughs> let's try this offense how is that going to work yeah it'll be interesting to see i know for 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 sure that uh you know whitco hasn't seen a whole lot of zone um so it'll be interesting to see now this is this is real this in my brain um <laughs> i know for sure against coach benedict he's coached in he's yeah. coached for 30 years um, I was looking at at his record and 
I think it's almost 700 basketball, high school basketball games. And, mm. and he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, he's won 450 games. And, and, um, but I, I know, I know what he does against a certain type of, of zones because I coached against him for six years when I was over at DeKalb and he was at Columbia City. And so, um, as a matter of fact, it's still playing through my head. You know, when, when Derek Heinen, who was the coach mm-hmm. at Fairfield, um, was up top, uh, uh, um, you know, on that zone, yeah. and he's slicing, just slicing right through that. I can picture that. And so I know what he he's going to do, you know, against certain types of zones and, and maybe some zones that he might struggle with. And so it's, it's kind of interesting to, to think, you know, two coaches sitting back going, well, I remember what he used to do against this, <laughs> and so maybe we should try this. And, well, he doesn't quite have the personnel for this. And, and so you really go through a lot of different things in order to – come up with a game plan right right and then you got to go uh, try to get it sold to the kids and and all that stuff so it's kind of fun to think through all that stuff. but don't you have to uh, maybe i'm wrong because i didn't play basketball they wouldn't let me on the floor with a cane but <laughs> it's traveling when you put all three feet down did you know yeah. that yeah. anyway yeah. um <laughs> don't you have to prepare a particular zone i mean don't you have to as a team yeah. become good at a particular you can't just throw out the zone for this week is going to be the right. one two two, and the zone for next week is going to be the two three. You you got to have a zone that you do right. Yeah, and I think the the week what we call is a foundational defense too, because a lot of people think a zone. No, now I can stand straight up and I don't have to work as hard because I yep. just got an area. And so you know our philosophies have been to build that foundational man to man defense because really it's it's still man-to-man principles it's just you're in a zone area you know you're just covering an area but you still got to communicate you, know you still got to stay low you still got to close out on a, on a shooter so <clears throat> again when when you think about some young guys and some inexperienced in, in guys you're still you have to build that foundational defense and so so you're saying that's the more important <clears throat> part that you can shift people around into a particular place so you can change which zone you're running as long as they maintain these foundational defense yeah it's, just, it's the same principles and, and it's just different zone areas you mm-hmm. know it's like maybe like a football team going from a dime to a nickel which i have no idea what that means but <laughs> you know they may go from a, their foundational might be a three four you know but they do play a dime and a nickel and different guys guarding you know different areas so i think it's you know once you start venturing into the zone whether it's a one three one or two three or or three two you know, it's kind of the same thing. It's just when you call a different zone, it's just that you're guarding different areas, you know. And so that's what that's what you do when you're developing a team. You know, you can't come into – for the most part. Now, we do have teams on our schedule that bring all veterans back. Yeah. Like everybody's back. Maybe well, everybody rolls guy. through that eventually in your in your cycle of yeah. players. And, but we're, we're not there yet. No. You know, and so we, we got these new guys that, we you know, we mentioned a zone. And, and there are times in practice – and even in a game that it goes through my head like this will work well we haven't even practiced it yet I, we yeah. can't do it and so we i talked about the playbook maybe being on page five or eight you know of a 30 page playbook it's just you have to be really patient you know with the development of your team you try to get good at something and then you build off of that and so obviously you know just making a change with our post defense i think our man to man is going to be better and now you're starting you're going to start to see some additional things that I think we can we can start doing in, in basketball games. More on Wallace Warrior basketball here on Coach's Corner in just a moment on 93.7 The Mix and 937themix.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and 937themix.com. So we talk to the head basketball coach of the Wabasee Warriors, Coach John Everingham. Coach, four weeks in now. Guys have been around, been working for a month. Um, each player plays such a critical role when you've only got 12 on the bench. Let's talk about the development of your team and how your, uh, your folks there on the varsity are uh, progressing into this year. He, he's a pro, isn't he, Cass? Jiminy well, Christmas. I don't know about that, but, you know, <laughs> CNN and ESPN 1 and 2 and ESPN 50 have got to listen to him. A trained yeah. chimp could do that. Oh, jeez. We're, we're, we're a well trained chimp, but there a trained you go. chimp. We're off air talking about, well, what in the world are we going to talk about here? But you get, you probably lock us in a room, which we, we're not locked in, but we're in a, uh, we could probably do this for, for a couple hours. But, uh, yeah, I did it for 15 years, yeah. so yeah, I can do that. Especially talking basketball. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. It's kind of fun. So, uh, no, no, I, I think, uh, 
you know, here's the thing. You know, after four games, you start uh, getting data, right? And yeah. data, yes. stats, you know, and you, you really – we've talked before on the show about – um, how lost you can get. It's like a rabbit hole of stats and numbers and videos. And, and some of them mean something to you, and some of them don't. So, and, and I would imagine it depends on where the kid's at on the floor and what his responsibilities are yeah. as to which stats matter to you. Absolutely. You, we got a guy, you know, right now, I'll kind of start on the on the end. You know, Mason Shoemaker is, an, is a, just an interesting uh, specimen to talk about basketball-wise, okay. you know, because he – he, he does a lot of things in practice and um, that, that nobody would really know. Like his stats aren't going to – they're not going to jump up and, and um, you know, just stare you right in the face and scare you or anything like that or any coach. You know, but the fact is, you know, we know he's one of our better um, defenders in practice, you know, and so we're, we're strategically putting him on guys that, that need to get better in practice. Mm-hmm. You know, he's on the second team and – and and then then you look at the JV game. Well, you think, well, he's good enough to play there, right? Well, he's not even starting on the on the JV, and um, just because you know some other guys are, are developing there, so he's coming off the bench in the JV game. But um, but he's a very important, valuable uh, piece of the puzzle for us, you know, in practice. And then you know his ability to take a charge, you know, that he's oh, proven wow. in practice. And then going into tonight, I'm sure we'll talk about. You know, us not being 100%, we're sitting there going through the roster. And then, no joke, I was sitting, you know, in practice uh, Thursday. And um, we're looking around, and I was just sitting, um, you know, Coach Hoffert, Coach Nate O'Connell were were coaching some defensive things. And I'm sitting over there taking a little break and sitting next to Pat O'Connell. Um, and uh, I said, who who are we going to play uh, Saturday? <laughs> so he, he said, <laughs> That's have, a good you, question. have you thought about Mason Shoemaker? And I go, I kind of looked over, and I thought, well – that's interesting, you know, because what we need right now is maybe a little more of a defensive, you know, presence, you mm-hmm. know, in the game. And and so um, now we got some guys that are pretty skilled offensively that might, may help us offensively. But in this particular game, you know, Mason could creep up into the game, you know. And so I think that's a that's just a credit to him and the, the role that he's accepted, you know, within our basketball program. So, um, you know, you're right. You know, that data – that we do have in terms of stats is really important to us as we take a look at, you know, some of the guys that we're thinking about playing at the varsity level and, you know, the overall development of a player, Mm -hmm. you know, on the JV team, you know, and so, um, you know, Carson Smith is a, is a sophomore Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's really showing offensively that um, he, he's got some weapons that that are going to come in handy at some point, you know, in his high school career, but he's a sophomore, you know, the, the old traditional way of doing things is, um, you know, when a freshman comes into high school, you know what they play? Freshman basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then when they become a sophomore, you graduate and you play varsity or you play JV, JV basketball. And then usually you got a, you got a team full of juniors and seniors that you're choosing from. And we, we were put in a position this year that we, we couldn't do that, you mm-hmm. know. And so um, he could be a real beneficiary of, of the process, you know, and really taking his time in terms of development. Um, again, you know, Carson's shown that offensively, you know, he's got some, he's got some tools that, that I think we're going to like down the road. So, um, you know, that's just a, a couple guys right there. And, and Jay Finlinson, who's going to start for us tonight, um, <clears throat> you know, is a guy that uh, um, we've been given two quarters on the JV. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you know, just really working with him on some of his weaknesses, and his stats aren't going to jump out at you uh, on the JV team. But we're not looking at points and, and assists and things like that. We're looking at his footwork. You know, can you square somebody up out on the perimeter? Can you keep somebody in front? And so we give him a little bit of time you know, on the JV to kind of develop, you know, those types of skills. So um, can be very valuable experience, you know, that can't that get JV better if you don't play. And if you got enough guys on the varsity, it's better time than, you know, you, you got to give them time somewhere and that's the time you got available to give him. Yeah. And yeah. You know, even going down the list, you know, we got two other freshmen that, that are uh, getting great experiences, you know, on the JV. And so, you know, it's, it's like a, you know, it is kind of a little bit like a triple uh, A or double A, yeah. you know, baseball or whatever. And it's reference developmental. It's yeah. developmental, and so you go out there, right. and it's the, the accountability is not nearly as uh, the pressure is not nearly as much, and and you make five mistakes in in a in a JV game, and maybe only one of them kind of get exploited, you know, and so. Mm. 
you know, Robbie Finlinson, who who is uh, uh, just a v- really talented freshman basketball up player for us, and he's playing the, on the JV, obviously, and and he had, he struggled a little bit at West Noble, and but he got 14 shots up, and he's a guy that's going to be able to score for us, you know, probably next year and beyond, and you never know, he may sneak in there this year too, um, and Weston Hoffert, um, who's who's another freshman that's getting valuable experience on the JV, handling the basketball. Um, he's taken, I think, three or four charges in, in the JV games. So um, we're very pleased with, with those guys and, and what they're bringing to the JV team and, and the experiences that they're getting. They're going to help them down the road. Yeah, and I don't know when. You know, I get people ask me all the time, well, when are you moving this, <coughs> this one up? When That's are you like moving that one up? like asking when's it going to rain. <clears throat> Which, yeah, hey, no. that brings you, you're not in control of all those elements. That brings my, a question to my mind. How much time do you get? I mean, how many quarters of JV can you play mm-hmm. and still play varsity? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, well, the, oh, back when, what, when I was in high school, they, you got four quarters a night. That was that it. That was it. That was it. What do you so get now? You get five quarters uh, a night. See, it and used so, to be six at some time. I when thought I was it was so many a weekend or so many no, a No, no, so many a game. Time. No, you, get, you basically, the, the rules are, uh, the, the it HSA rules are, it's you can play f- four quarters. And they got the, this bonus quarter I'll talk about in a second. But <laughs> you get basically play 22 games, you get four quarters a game. You get 88 quarters a year. So you cannot oh, play wow. more than 88 quarters a year, and we track that. Um, but they do uh, give you a bonus quarter. So in one night, um, there, there was – when the rule changed, there, there was a lot of kids that were – like in, in games where you were ahead or behind a lot, where a could, kid could get valuable experience, you know, out there yeah. on the floor. Right. Um, th- 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 they were out of quarters. Mm. Oh my so gosh. they give they 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 gave. I thought it was a great idea. They give you a bonus quarter, so if you, um, uh, you can play five a night. You know, so we got guys that are like Jay Finlinson can play. We've been sitting him out. If you've noticed, we've been sitting him out of the first yes. quarter, and then he starts the second quarter, and then he's eligible to play quarters two, three, and four because he played two quarters in the JV, and he can play three in the varsity game. And so we, you you know we're managing you know those quarters from some of our players and. And with our sickness kind of coming in this week into play, we're saving a couple other guys' quarters. And so that trickles down to the freshman team, right? Because yeah. sure. if you're saving quarters for JV guys, now you might need an extra body on the uh, on the JV. JV. And so um, you got to manage players and quarters and all that stuff. And, and oh my gosh. obviously you can't go over. You know. um, continuing the discussion on development, then uh, who else yeah. have you got that's playing big for you right now, Coach? Well, to, we, steal, to steal a Bob Lovell line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I we had, I think, against, I believe, against Manchester, we mm-hmm. scored 68 points in the JV game. That's incredible. That's a lot of points. Uh, we have some offensive firepower coming, in it, and I think our leading scorer on the JV right now is Darius Lewis. And so uh, Darius is a sophomore again. And and the other thing, too, is sometimes you get teams, and we've had them in the past, where you got a bunch of juniors. Mm. playing on the jv and the jv record is 15 and 5 or something like you have this incredible jv record but you're playing a bunch of juniors Mm -hmm. and they're just overpowering freshmen and sophomores from other schools and so it's a little misleading on the development of your program because you got guys that only have one year left we have a true system going here except for honestly except for the twins that kind of bypass some of that things based on need at the varsity level we got freshmen and sophomores basically only playing JV. And so Darius Lewis is another guy, a sophomore, um, that's getting great minutes on, on the JV level. And, and he's proven he can get the ball to the rack. Um, he got into the West Noble game and did some good things there. And mm-hmm. his, his ability to get around people and his ball handling skills. When we first saw him um, this year, um, so interesting story about him. He was here, Trayvon Coleman's little brother, growing up. I'd see him out at the park all the time. Loves basketball, plays a lot of basketball. Um, but his family decided to move him to uh, Michigan City. Um, and he played for Michigan City Marquette last year as a freshman and then came back to us. And we're glad to have him. He's a great kid. Fits in really well with the, with our program. Um, but he is uh, he's a leading scorer on the JV team. He's got the ability to get the ball to the basket offensively. Um, he's probably varsity ready right now, but it's just uh, we're going to be patient with his development in terms of some defensive concepts and, and help side and sliding over and taking charges. It's going to take a little bit of time, but, you know, we got two freshmen in, in Finlandson and, and uh, Hoffert that are getting great minutes on the JV. 
and then a group of sophomores that are that are getting some good minutes on the JV and and even too you look at um, the need for some defense maybe at the varsity level. Cole Young has entered into the to the conversation about how well he moves his feet and and so um, you know overall we feel great about where we're at you know with the with the high school program um, our freshman team. Um, had a couple big victories, uh, beat Goshen on Thursday night, I believe, a big NLC win over there. And I, uh, Coach Wilson's been filming the games. And I, I, last night I, I got a chance to watch that freshman game and, and certainly some talent down there too and four or five guys that, that we really like on the, on the freshman team that eventually you're going to see on the JV this year. Mm-hmm. Coach, what about Dukes? I mean, uh, he, he is you know, definitely you're probably your best player. Mm-hmm. He's definitely going to go uh, somewhere to play ball. Uh, it, it's kind of neat watching him. Bill and I have been watching him now all mm-hmm. year. And, uh, it's, it's, you got to talk about him. I want to hear what you say. Yeah, I mean, look, Keaton is uh, – he, he's, uh, he's a cool guy, man. I mean, look, he, he just uh, – you know, when guys get to be a seniors, and, and yesterday um, – I got a chance to uh, uh, Cameron Salazar came back from from Marion uh, University and was spending some time home with family and got a chance to stop into practice and it's really cool you know the development from you know your freshman yeah. year and you're maybe a little uptight around the coach or nervous to talk to the coach and and then there's this bond that you develop with the coach as you kind of move through and Keaton it feels like he's been around here forever um, but this scrawny little freshman number thirty four that we inserted into the lineup his freshman year and he making some spin moves and actually doing some things he hits on the JV team you know he hits a last second shot you know against Northwood on the road on the in a JV game his freshman year and we st- we started thinking this kid's going to be pretty good you know and so um you know obviously through his sophomore and junior year he's just pro- a proven guy you know i think you know the last five or six games last year he averaged over 20 points a game shot the ball really well and so uh, there's a different pressure, you know, that comes with oh being my. a senior, and this is your last go around. And, and basketball's meant so much to him, and, and he does have a future playing somewhere in college. And and um, um, he's a special player, but he's also a special kid too because the leadership and the situation that we're in this year, he's taken he's taken the reins on that and embraced it, and he's been great for our younger guys. And so, um, you know, we we're, we're glad he's on our team. More with Coach Averingham in just a moment here on Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com. Talking to the head basketball coach of the Wabasee Warriors, Coach John Everingham. Tonight, Coach, we are headed down State Road 13 and then a quick turn on State Road 14 to get over <laughs> to uh, Waco High School. I think we're going to take five. Are we? All the way down to 14. Well, we got to take County there. Road 800 and then we got, yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, headed down to Whitco tonight. And Whitco's always been a bit of a problem for us. Uh, those TRC schools, they play a little bit different brand of basketball. And Whitco changes it up so often. They've always got something that uh, tends to get in people's craw. What are we looking for? Uh, what are we looking for tonight at Whitco? Yeah, it's going to be tough. We talked a little bit about Coach Benedict, you know, taking over the program. We didn't get a chance to play him last year. No. You know, COVID, we, we, the game was canceled. Right. And we never had a chance to really make that game up. So um, it, it'll be interesting. I, I coached against Coach Benedict for, for many years at uh, when I was at DeKalb. He was at Columbia City. So it's going to be an interesting matchup because I'm sure in the back of our minds we're thinking – how similar is this going to be? We had some great, great games um, against uh, De- the DeKalb Columbia City rivalry was was hot and heavy, you know, back then. And I have a lot of respect for Coach Benedict. And I will tell you too, you know, a couple years ago, Coach O'Connell and I went on a a trip, um, and it was a professional development trip. And and one of the first people that I called uh, to sit down and just talk basketball, you know, talk about our program and and what we do and and trying to make some improvements, you know, here and there in our program. Um, he was one of the first guys that we called. And so we sat in his office for probably, honestly, just like three or four hours, man. Oh we were just gosh. sitting there talking. And, and uh, at the time, he was at Bluffton. And um, um, he has now since uh, taken the job at, uh, at Whitco. So anytime you're, you're across, you know, you're – you know, looking down and you see Coach Benedict down there, you know it's going to be really tough. You yep. know, honestly, they're going to play good defense, and they do, you know, play solid defense. Um, and then they got some length, you know, these kind of tall, slender guys and Craig and Kroll and number 30. 
um, that that they're six three to six five, you know, across, and they're they're not they're not like big big guys. They do play in the post, but they uh, they're got long, height, but not girth. Long and lean, yeah. you know, just guys that are, that that move and got long arms. So they're they're certainly going to present some problems, you know, for us, um, you know. And then a, you know the number ten, you know, kid. Um, I think his name's Leo. Um, is going to be you know something that we we're, we're going to have. A, he's athletic. He's a six foot athletic guard, and and uh, he's averaging fourteen points a game. And and so they got four guys that that I'm sure he feels very comfortable you know with the, and some variety. It sounds like yeah yeah they get their point guard is is not necessarily a scorer type, but he does a good jo- good enough job um, you know handling the basketball. So they got all the pieces of the puzzle there. You know, in players one through five, I would say that they're probably then he'd be the first one to admit they're they're probably working on some depth issues, um, but those guys are getting better too. You look at from game one, I watched all their games. You know, from game one to game four, those guys are getting considerably better off the bench. You know, number thirty four and number twenty two. So, um, I think it's going to be a tough one. It'll be a tight one. You know, yeah, so uh, uh, you know. it's going to be hopefully. You know, uh, it's going to be a back and forth, you know, type game. I would expect it to be. Yeah, you know, I looked at their scores, and when they won, they're, they're two and two, and when they won, they scored over sixty points. Yeah, I mean, so they have the ability to put points on the board. So this is going to be really interesting. You know, your defense has to be able to control that a little bit because uh, otherwise, you'll just uh, it'll be another another East uh, another West Noble game. Yeah, and and it could be too. You know, it just uh, we're, we're we're not consistent enough to know exactly what you're going to get you yeah know? i mean honestly i we i'll tell you what uh, uh coach o'connell and i went out to we went to chubby's after thursday's practice and <laughs> we're like high-fiving and we looked awesome yeah and we did too uh-huh. i mean i thought and that's without dukes because uh, he's been sick this week but oh my god without dukes we looked awesome i'm thinking you add that guy to the mix and we're over there <laughs> high-fiving i'm not joking it was the last night after practice it was about the other way i mean we couldn't complete a pass you know, we had guys out there that looked like they were sleepwalking, <laughs> and we we walk off the floor and go in the office, and we we're thinking we're we're never going to win a game. We're not going to win a, another game this year. Isn't that and amazing. So it, the consistency. I even talked about it last week a little bit, maybe after the game, after the West Noble game. The consistency of our team is all over the place right now, and I yeah. think um, that's normal. So it's not it's not odd to see that from you know a team that's inexperienced or young or or is kind of coming together for the first time, but it's something that, that is a, a concern and something we're going to have to kind of work on. And it starts in practice. You know, when you come yep. Monday and you're good, you got to come the next day and be good too. And so, you know, the consistency is, is, is all over the board for us right now. So I don't know what team's going to show up tonight. I hope it's the really good one. <laughs> yeah. Now the cool uh, thing for us is we have potential to be really good. Like yes. we, we'll put a team out there. That's, it's going to be uh, skill level. is yeah. great. It's like going to be like a, you know, like a, a lightning strike. Boom, man, you guys look great. And then, unfortunately, kind of like what we saw at West Noble, we're going to throw a, a stinker out there every once in a while. And so I think that's normal, the normal development of, of a team, and certainly is kind of where we're at right now. Uh, in addition to what Whitco brings to what you normally would bring, you're dealing with health problems this week. Not not COVID, thank goodness, old flesh and influenza, but uh, it nonetheless uh, does cause you considerable difficulties. Yeah, and you know we, you know after the West Noble game, we we're, we're real positive during that game, and and it, because I, I know because I've been doing this long enough to know that we're probably going to be a little inconsistent, you know, through the first part of the season, and and. Um, um, so it wasn't a shocker that we laid an egg over at West Noble and it's like, okay, guys, it's, we, I've been preparing them for that, you know, and certainly at West, uh, at, uh, Manchester, we, we thought that we were world beaters and, and we come from behind we're making big plays and the student section was into it. And then we turned right around the next night and it's like, man, you know, we, we didn't look like the same team, you know? And so, um, but I had been preparing them, you know, for, for, Hey, it's okay. We're going to have a few tough, rough games and we're just not going to look normal. And so I was looking forward to a week of practice and getting everybody together and, and getting better as a group and, you know, get a, get a text message on, on Sunday. We got Keaton Dukes of all people is that's a nice one uh, that, that uh, basically <clears throat> had 104 temperature. And the first thing, oh my you, gosh. first thing you think about is COVID, yep. you know, and with close contacts and everybody being together and the bus ride, you're thinking, oh, my, this is going to be another two-week yeah. close contact, and we're going to be sitting at home and all that stuff. And um, 
um, he he went and got tested for COVID, which uh, thank goodness was negative, but he did test positive for influenza A, and he was oh, wow. down and out. I mean, if he mm-hmm. if he's a tough kid, if he could be there, he would. And um, he he didn't practice all week. You oh know? my so, gosh! Um, he showed up last night a little bit and looked okay, and we'll we'll see what sort of energy he has for tonight's game. We're not expecting much from him. Um, but, you know, again, it's next man up. It's a great opportunity for Jay Finlinson to get in there and start. And, and um, our first choice for, for a starter was uh, Peyton Felger. Played a nice game at uh, West Noble. Yeah. Hit a couple shots and had a little bounce in his step. And he calls me on uh, Wednesday. And, oh, no. Uh, well, I, actually, he was at school and wasn't feeling well. He goes to the doctor, and his temperature was, was way up there. He also tested negative for COVID. Um, but tested positive for influenza A, and he's out for tonight. He will not be at the game. Oh, my gosh. So now we're down to basically a seven-man rotation turned into a five-man rotation. and um, You got yeah. the same problem Whitco's got Yes, at that point. Yep, it's we're the, the iron five, which is another reason why you know the zone could come into play a little bit tonight to mm-hmm. conserve just a little bit of energy. But um, but it's normal. Again, I, I keep saying that. You know, you every year you battle with injuries, and, yep. and unfortunately those things happen. And and every year you got guys that that don't they they get sick and they got to be out. Yep. And so it's something you deal with. It's a good life lesson that that uh, you know you got to count on the next guy to come in and give you some positive minutes. And we went through the whole roster, everybody at Varsity JV, and we went, can this guy help us? Can this guy help us? Can this guy help us? And and the answer to all of those questions were yes, but they're all different areas. Mm-hmm. You know, so what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And It's got to fit the particular hole in the puzzle that you've yeah. got. And yeah. so we're going to piece some things together tonight. And, um, um, and I, we're not counting on much from Keaton. I, we have no idea on that one. Um, but, uh, yeah, we are battling we, and, and even probably more important than not having those guys available tonight is we didn't have the team together this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it was hard to get better as a unit, um, leading up to the game. So we'll How'd see that how that work with the E day to, uh, yesterday. Yeah. They still allow us to practice, you know, after school. So we had okay. to wait till three o'clock to, to practice, but you know, we, you know, the fog, fog generally lifts at some point. I know it's unsafe for kids <laughs> to get to school and they cancel school, but, uh, the snow days, you yeah. know, when there's too much snow and it's it's not going to be safe to drive by three, then yeah. then sometimes we do have to cancel practice. But we were able to practice yesterday. Well, that's good. So after we uh, play Whitco this weekend, next Friday night, the oh, root yeah. of all evil uh, <laughs> arrives in our schedule. Uh-huh. The uh, source of the black burnt cinder in the center of my heart, <laughs> placed there by Henry Smith 30 years uh-huh. ago, the Warsaw Tigers. Yep. We, and it's... Uh, and to make matters even more difficult, uh, we, it's at the Tiger Den. Yes, you know, I saw that. It's away, <clears throat> yes. which is a, a very difficult place to play. And so they, you know, they they're good. I mean, that's really just the bottom line. They got they got two collegiate players, and and um, um, you know, number two for them. You know, last night had um, uh, I think thirty two or thirty five oh. points against Crown Point. We watched that game um, on the TV last night. Coach O'Connell and I are texting back and forth, uh, uh, scratching our head. You know, uh, uh, Judah Zimfukwe is uh, is out right now with a finger issue. But I look, I, I just think the start of the NL season, he'll be back. You oh, know, yeah. He dislocated his finger. I hope he's I hope he's fine. I know he's a good kid. And and um, but those two guards right there, um, they're, they're good. They're legit, the real deal. And so and then and then after that, you add these these huge muscular guys i mean um that they're they're big they've and they're always strong. got monsters in the paint yeah and so i know you know they did i feel bad too because i talked to um um over our middle school played over at warsaw and i got a chance to talk to uh, coach kessler the former uh grace college coach and right. his, his grandsons are all littered all over the warsaw <laughs> program right now but the uh, um the oldest one is uh uh i believe a division one or a college uh, offensive lineman, let's put it that oh way. He is huge, Dawson. Um, probably six six, probably two fifty. I'm not oh, serious. And he is a monster. And um, what Coach was telling me is that his favorite sport is basketball. Oh my gosh! Um, he's he's probably better at football, but his favorite sport is basketball. He's really looking forward to. It. And unfortunately, within the first minute of the season, he tears his ACL. Ooh. 
Ooh. Yeah, and so um, again, another kid that I, I know for sure that he's a great kid, and you hate to see that. Um, but they'll 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 fill in with another super huge guy, you know. So I think the kid's Wilkinson or, or Wilkinson um, is a you know six four, probably two thirty. And so their physicalness is, is definitely going to be a, a problem as we look at, at their team. And, and so they got two collegiate guards and then some, some big, big boys that yeah. are really physical on defense. You know, they, they deny the passing lanes. They make it hard for you to pass. They make it hard for you to think, you know, when you're, when you're out there. They just put so much pressure on you in the half court. Um, it's it's going to be difficult for us to execute. Um, but – I will tell you this too, um, that that uh, as we were texting last night back and forth, Coach O'Connell and I, certainly the light bulbs are going off. Um, they're not a perfect team, <laughs> and they have some chinks in the armor that we're going to try to exploit. And so, well, don't um, say what they are because absolute, I don't want them fixing them before we get there. <laughs> absolutely not going to mention what they are, but we do feel like. Uh, we do have the advantage at some of the positions, and if we can execute against them, we'll worry about that next week again. We're sick this week, right? Uh, we're hoping if we get through that and we come back full strength on Monday, we'll have four really good practices together and really start to kind of get things in gear to, you know, to start moving forward in a, in, a, in a positive way. If this is our sick period here and we get it out of the way, then, then um, I'm cool with that, you know. You know, one of the other things about Warsaw is when you go down there, I mean, that's like watching Hoosiers. You know their fans and their everything. Just, just a tremendous game. And I, I always, I love, I love to go down there. I like to go down there, even though it's an away game. So. Great place yeah. to play. Great place. Hope they play. lose by a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <We did. laughs> or, or more. Or, or more. You know, that's a minimum. Yeah. Okay. Well, when we come back, we'll talk about the remainder of the schedule in just a moment here on Coach's Corner on ninety three point seven FM The Mix and ninety three seven The Mix dot com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and 937themix.com as we talk to the head basketball coach of the Wabasee Warriors, Coach John Everingham. Coach, as we uh, hit this part of the season, we tend to take a little look ahead because we know we've got holiday tournaments and some big games between now and the uh, first of the year. Let's talk a little bit about beyond the evil that is Warsaw, what we've got <laughs> coming up uh, on the schedule. Oh, I know uh, we're going to see the Golden Eagles of Columbia City um, and that's always a, I mean, bring your mouth guard to that game and maybe your football helmet. That's yeah. always physical. Yeah, it was, you know, we, we played them last year. We, we, we were coming off uh COVID and I mean, the first eligible day that Dukes could return to, you know, active right. participation <laughs> was that game. And we just, we were in a bad spot. We hadn't, we were sitting at home, not practicing. They, they took care of us pretty good, but they got the exact same team back. Oh, wow. And so they, they had a big kid named Bolt that uh, decided not to play this year. But mm. um, um, I went and saw them play uh, uh, Cherubusco um, at Columbia City on Tuesday night, I That's believe. That's a huge rivalry game. Yep, and, and that was a good game. I mean, it was a two- or four-point game in the third quarter, and Columbia City kind of pulled away. But it's clearly – they're they're like a – as we'll talk about some other teams here, they're like a well-oiled machine. They got all the veterans back. I mean, everybody's back, you know, and juniors and seniors and – and um, they got guys that can run and jump and shoot, and and they have all the pieces of the puzzle too. They're three and one right now. Uh, their only loss was to uh, the, uh, the the mentioned team from uh, uh, the uh, south there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we never mention when they win, only when they lose. Go yeah, on. so uh, you know Warsaw got them uh, by ten or so, uh, but they're three and one. Yeah, and so um, they're they're a legitimate fifteen plus win team um the, the the baker kid's been been around for uh all four years he's been a varsity starter and so um it, they're good they're gonna be good and and so um now i will tell you one thing is too as we move through some of these games after the warsaw game starting december 21st through january 29th we play 10 games and nine of those are at home and yeah, so, I was at that. Um, how nice is that? Yeah, that is is really really nice. But you then know, next year, does that flip around and become a problem? Well, we do have the Wallace, you know, our tournament. Oh, oh, yeah, know? okay. So I'm those, with you. those I'm are with two you. games that All we right. get home every year. So actually, our schedule is this year for 22 regular season games, we go uh, 13 home games, nine road games, and then it does flip. So you look at um, there's it's 11 and 11. So on 
uh, on the odd years, we, we have 11 home games and 11 road games. And then the other years, like this year, we'll go 13 and 9. And so uh, 13 home games and, and 9 road games. And in addition to that, this year is the sectional is played, you know, right oh, here. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we got 13 home games plus the sectional. We could have one, two, or three more more games at home. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for people to come come out and see us play, and especially here you know, through a stretch of basketball um, that should be pretty good. So we play uh, Columbia City, very physical team. Most of them are back from last year. And then we drop right back into the buzzsaw again as we travel across on County Road 1000 North. See, Coach, I can <laughs> yeah, do that all the time. Yeah, you, know, you don't even do need that. your Google Maps. Um, and we go to Albion to take on Central Noble, and you, they're the real deal. You can travel over there. Yeah. I'm not going. Oh, oh, that's uh, here. Because See, I'm going to Cavs. I'm going yeah, to the wrong right. gym. You, you guys can gym. do that. I've done that before, by the well, way. Well, we all have in this room. Yeah, that's, right. that's a bad feeling when you're going to scout, <laughs> scout a team. And Bill, then... We haven't talked about Central Noble yet, and I look down, and oh. our next away game is at Plymouth on January 21st. <laughs> yeah, no, we <laughs> Uh, it's a good, that's a great opportunity, uh, much like some other games on our schedule. But uh, it's, it's a great opportunity because they're ranked number one in the state in Class Two A, and, and oh, they got wow. a Mr. Basketball candidate. Oh um, my! And so we're, we're he's uh, signed at uh, Wisconsin already to go to what oh, to, to man, the Big, Big Ten, Ten to you know to play basketball. But it's and not so, just a one man show over there either. They got some great supporting cast. You know the Connor Seijin certainly it leads leads the way, but yeah. they, they're not number one because of him. Right? Uh, they got you know Logan Gard is a six seven uh, athletic. Shh you know he's super athletic um it's a real who's your story over there you know albion pretty small community central noble definitely the smallest of the nobles um and then they get all this talent it just all hits at one time and um boy it's wonderful when that happens in a small community another who's your story i keep looking around for gene hackman yeah Yeah. (laughs) well they they they're good i mean they're good they're really good they they took care of us last year and again the same same kind of story as uh, columbia city they got everybody back you know and so um, you know, ranked number one in the state, they they certainly are the favorites to make a run in the postseason. You know, and and um, and so I haven't watched them play yet, and mm-hmm. I, we'll worry about that when the, when the time comes. But you know, the way I look at it is, it's a great opportunity. You know, the best, basically, the best of the best is coming right into our gym. That's how you get better. And we're gonna have to grow up real fast yep. with with some of these teams that we're talking about right now. Um, they're the real deal. If we can compete with them, um, it's going to be a really good sign, you know, for us moving into, uh, you know, moving out of that stretch of, of games, you know, through we we, we got a, you know, we, just a great opportunity for us. Talk about the holiday tourney. I want to hear about this. What what? How's that match up? And yeah, t- talk a little bit about that. We do. We start off with Garrett. They're struggling a little bit, and um, um, we certainly feel like we we probably would be favorites, you know, in that game. Yeah. But nothing's guaranteed, as we found out last year. I thought we'd be yeah. favorites against Ileana Christian, and we didn't beat them, you know. And so, um, you know, we scheduled Garrett. You know, the first game there on the on the other side, two brand new teams to our tournament: Rochester and Woodland. And so, right now. You know, Woodland would be the favorite. I did watch them play. We played them in the summertime too, and and they got a six seven lefty um, that that is already signed at a, a big time NAIA school. Um, so he, he's the real deal. I think in the summer game he had twenty seven points against us, and he was hitting fadeaway threes, and, oh and that God. was on our main six main seven hitting fadeaway threes. Lefty too. That ought yeah. to be a felony. Yeah, and so you know we go. That's a lefty, Bill. We go. Three with well, the twenty first, the twenty second, and the 29th right there to close out. You know our Christmas uh, break right there, and and we'll play against three legit. Uh, and, and even, even if you include Warsaw, like the sure. guys that are that are probably all of them, all of them are going to get their college paid for because they're so good at basketball, and and at different levels. But the kid from Woodland um, that we're going to see probably see in uh, in the championship game. We're hoping. Um, um, is is also another good player, but at that time we we would already seen Asijin and and the guy the kids from Warsaw and and the Columbia City kids and and so I'm hoping that you know the Warsaw Columbia City Central Noble game kind of starts to prepare us for for what's in store, um, and then then we got the beast of um, you know, Northwood lingering mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. you know after we come back from break and they're they are a well oiled mm-hmm. machine, but yeah. I think we're gonna have a chance in that holiday tournament cast. Yeah. Um, to get that one. 
You well, know, that's going to be really interesting. Term. I noticed you were talked earlier uh, about the different matchups mm-hmm. and how they're going to go. Could you talk a little bit about how this is going to start out and then what happens? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we come in, we're going to play the first game. Um, and I just thought it was fair to, to not make teams get up early to play that first game. Give them some time to travel. We're here. Um, Garrett's, um, you know, closer, closer than, than yeah. the others. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll play that 10 o'clock game and then the – the 11:30 game will be uh, Rochester and and uh, Woodland, and both those teams are pretty good. Rochester is, is is good, but I'm not sure they're 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 quite as good as Woodland right now. But um, but then then the losers of those two games play each other at six o'clock, and then the same thing. Uh, the championship game will be at eight o'clock. Now I will tell you too that the JV ter- tournament will be running um at the same time, yeah, and so jam. like for example, we're playing uh, Garrett at uh, 10 o'clock. That means um, the JV teams from Rochester and Woodland will play at 10, and then we'll flip-flop. And so um, there's going to be a lot of basketball that day, and I think it's it's going to be four you know, really competitive same-size schools too. And so what I did when, when looking for teams is try to get – you know the same type of schools you know together you know 3a type schools that can compete against each other how know. far in advance did you have to book all this talk a little bit about the logistics of hosting a tournament like that well john baker is the the coach at woodland now and he was the coach at belmont um when i was at DeKalb, and so i know him well i know he's a super good guy and so he shot me just text me and we talked on the phone and and um so uh, Rob Malco at Rochester was was. But when did you when did that's, when did you uh, come together with these four teams? Was this something that happened two years ago, a year ago? When when did this happen? Yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this happens in the summertime. I don't know if that's okay. normal, but you know, I got I've been doing it long enough. I got some relationships with other coaches, mm-hmm. and I know where they're at. I know where we we're, we're at, and I think, hey, well, you guys want to play? I think it'd be a good matchup. You know, Malco was is at Rochester now. He left for a little while, but he was at Rochester when I was at Argus, which is neighbor right there. Yeah. So um, I know him a little bit and and contacted him and thought they, that would be a good fit for our tournament based on the competitiveness of the, their program and ours. And so, um, yeah, that happens generally in the summertime. Um, we have the two shootouts. We've talked about those the shootouts in the summertime. That we right. had two home ones, and so I get a chance to schedule those as well. And but I gotta believe scheduling that's a lot easier than scheduling the one in the winter time because you got yep. they've got a fixed schedule that they got to work around for the winter one. Yeah, and a lot of teams what they're doing right now is they're leaving two games open so they can play in a tournament. Mm, okay, so, oh, really? all right. So each year, yeah, you got a fixed schedule of twenty games. And then you kind of leave two open, and you be like, oh, who's got a tournament? What's going to be the best fit wow. for us year in and year out? And so for us, we have a home tournament. You know, huge thanks to our administration and the school and the AD that allows us to host our own tournament. So we wanted to drive all over the place. But a lot of teams do drive all over the place, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I had a, I had a, uh, the coach at uh, the current coach at DeKalb yesterday email me about next year's tournament. Hey, can we get into yeah, well, that's your what tournament next year? And so there's people that are reaching out to me, you know, wanting into that tournament. So I kind of keep it in the back of my head. And, and um, obviously the first and foremost, I'm going to do what's in the best interest of our program. And so, you know, we've had this tournament, I think, three or four years now. And um, uh, we won it one year, and we, we've always had a chance to win it. It's not like we're bringing in, you know, yeah. uh, Mishawaka Marion <laughs> right, and, right. and some of these teams that we probably can't compete with right now. Um, but we're, we're bringing in teams that we think we can compete with. But even maybe on paper, they're a little bit better. <clears throat> you know, so it would be a great win for us if we could beat Rochester or Woodland in the championship game if, uh, if we can get through Garrett. So a lot of basketball coming up for your Wabasi Warriors. It all starts tonight on the road at Whitco. Great place to play basketball. Kind of a old school gymnasium. Uh, yeah. If you remember being up in the, oh, I don't yeah. think they put us in the crow's nest anymore. I think it was condemned. <laughs> but uh, they used to put us up at the concrete crow's yeah, nest. Yeah, that, that was kind of nice. You got a view of the well, whole. Well, if you had binoculars, was, you could yeah. see the game from there. <laughs> you see it really and, well. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, tonight at Whitco mm-hmm. for the fans. It's a great place to go for a game, and we'll look forward to seeing you at Whitco for that one. And then next week, the Warsaw Tigers. 
<laughs> you can't miss that game. It it be, because you carry citizenship in this community, you must. I mean, it's like it's like being uh, enlisted. You must show up for the Warsaw game at and, Warsaw. At, well, it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's yeah, in Zimbabwe. Right. We're playing. Where you show up for the Warsaw game, oh, and uh, oh, we'll, I look forward to uh, seeing you there. And if we don't, we will be questioning you in the uh, dock <laughs> afterwards to find uh, out where you were. Coach, thanks much for being with us today. Right. This is Coach's Corner on 93.7 FM The Mix and 937themix.com, WRWTLP, Syracuse.